Hey guys, Looney here. Welcome back to yet another uh, plugin tutorial type of thing um, with MongoDB. Um, so this episode can also be found in text format on my website. Link will be in the description uh, for you guys to go ahead and follow um, just in case you can't understand this tutorial. Um, so this tutorial is kind of simple. We're creating the MongoDB class. Uh, now, to be honest, you don't need the MongoDB class. However, it is probably best that you have a MongoDB class. Um, so, first off, I need to go ahead and create a Java project. Now, I'm just going to call this MongoDB Tutorial. And I'm going to have mine running in JRE 1.8. Just because that's the only JRE I have. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and create, obviously, the main package. So, linux.co.uk.mongodbtutorial. Uh, dot mongodb actually no I'll just go ahead and do this tutorial core and then we can go ahead and click on the package and then do I do uh, then uh, create a new package dot mongo and then obviously the name would be mongodb as a class um, so this is our mongodb class and it's not really anything special uh, so let's just go ahead and link in our build paths so libraries and external jars now you need to click your Mongo Java driver and your spigot dot uh, jar file or your sponge or your craft bucket and bucket depending on what you personally are using. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and totally forget about enabling the plugin to begin with because well we don't really need to worry about that yet. So we're just going to be working inside of our MongoDB class. So. The things that we're going to be doing is registering Mongo, getting Mongo, getting a database, and setting the database that we are going to be working from, and obviously closing the Mongo connection. Um, now, getting and setting the database is pointless if you're not using one database. If you're using multiple, uh, it's pointless. Um, where this, the way that I'm doing it is basically so you can only, well, not only, be uh, you basically use one database and that database is set on enable uh, so anyway let's go ahead and get into this so private mongo client and this will be imported from com.mongodb and then let's just call this mongo which is equal to null and then let's go ahead and create a private db database and this will be our mongo database that we connect to so first let's go ahead and get a setter for our mongo so public mongo client get mongo and this is our void. So we need to go ahead and return Mongo at the end of here. And then if Mongo is equal to null, well then, simple. We have to then go ahead and do something that would enable that. Um, but because we've not got that code yet, it would be kind of pointless to do that. Um, so totally ignore this for my uh, time being. Um, because, you know, um, <laughs> we've not fully done that yet. Um, so let's go ahead and do the way that we're going to be registering Mongo. So you need to get the class name. So I've called my MongoDB. So it will be public and then the class name. So public MongoDB. And then we need to go ahead and do a string username, string password, and string host comma int port. Um, so this is what we'll be using to register our Mongo. So it, it's kind of like a little system. Where it's it's basically like the MySQL way. Um, if you've used MySQL, you recognise the way of registering this when we actually register it in the next episode. Um, but it's kind of just um, it's sort of like the basics. Um, so anyway, um, let's go ahead and carry on. So Mongo credential, and then let's just call it like credential or something, and then it's equal to a new Mongo credential. Uh, dot create credential and then this is the username so the username is the input username the database currently is mongodb oh, wait it would actually help if we were to do string database as well wasn't it that would be really helpful um, and then this database will then be obviously database uh, now let's go ahead and call this database 2 so it doesn't get messed, uh, mixed up with this um, and then obviously password However, this has to be a um, like pretty much paused in a way to the um, two chart array. Um, 
no idea why they want it like that, but they want it like that, so whatever. So anyway, next we need to do mongo equals new mongo client. Now inside of here we need to make a new server address. So new server address, and then the host, and then the port that we're going to be running it on. And then obviously we just need to go ahead and do arrays.as list. And then this will be the credential that we'll be using. Um, so that's that. Now we want to go ahead and import server address from com.mongodb. And then what we can go ahead and do is we can do mongodb and then do like the username. It's like dbd, uh, not dbd, mongodbd.username, mongodbd.password, uh, mongodbd.database2, uh, mongodbd.host, mongodbd.port. Um, so don't get confused with how we're doing this yet. Uh, the reason why we haven't got this Mongo DVD class is because we've not created it yet. Uh, so you will get that error, just hold on. So now let's go ahead and create the getter for our uh, database. So public db get database. And then this will go ahead and just, um, we need to do a check, it, check if database is equal to null. So if it's equal to null, then let's go ahead and do database is equal to get Mongo dot get db and then mongodb d dot database uh, so if the beta uh, database can't be found it's going to automatically get the um the basically the default one in a way uh, so if you don't want this system in you basically want it to return all just go ahead and remove these two lines and if you don't know already if you don't have the squiggly brackets next to this type of if statement it's basically going to say if this is true or false, whichever way your statement goes, um, then it will go ahead and output the line below it. However, if we did like a system dot output, oh system dot out, it's not going to um, print this line of code with this if statement. It, it treats it as a different line of code, um, so that would be called even if it is true or false. Um, so a lot of people are getting confused with that, and I just want to. Sum that up. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and set the connection. So set database, and then this will have to be a string. Uh, and you may be a little bit confused. It's because we have to pretty much get the database. So database is equal to get Mongo dot get database or DB for database. And then the DB is the input. Um, so you may be a little bit confused on why do we have to use get Mongo? Obviously, because Mongo has to be the thing that gets our database. Uh, and in 3.0.0 and higher, uh, getDB is deprecated. Um, however, you guys are probably going to be using the one below that, the 2. Point something one, just because it is genuinely better. Um, I, I just downloaded a 3.0 because I have that on my VBS. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, anyway, so public void uh, close connection. Um, now, it doesn't need to be an input for that. Um, because this is just going to close our static Mongo connection, you know, the one connection that we use for everything. And obviously, if Mongo doesn't equal null, so basically, if it has actually been set, then we just need to go ahead and disable it. And now let's get on to Mongo DVD. Uh, now, Mongo DVD stands for Mongo Database Data. So this will be the information that we'll be using for like almost everything. Um, this is kind of easy though, so don't worry. So public. Uh, static string now what you can do is you can go ahead and put like username then this will go ahead and get the um, the username from the config that we will be going ahead and creating um, so the string will be mongo dot username and I'll go ahead right now and just add something into our main class and obviously this will be our um, private static core plugin. Then obviously I need to go ahead and create my getter public core get plugin. Obviously this will return plugin. Um, so if we were in ahead and imported core, uh, what's I going to say? Static access. Right. Okay. So. Um, Config's not there because we've not thinged, um import with Java plugin. So let's go ahead and import Java plugin. Why is this duplicate itself? What the hell? 
Go away. Um, so if it has, uh, oh, not imported, but in, uh, extended it. So let's go ahead and, in fact, let's go ahead and get this class ready. So at override public void on enable. At override public void on disable. All right, okay, so that's our little plugin. So plugin is equal to this to uh, register it. So that's going to register it. And now what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and copy this another or paste this another four times. So one, two, three, four. Now this one will be the password. And then obviously we'll change this to password. This one will then be database, which will obviously be database from the uh, config. And then obviously host and port because we need that too. So the host is basically the IP of the host of where we, uh, of where our server is um, located. But obviously, instead of uh, for the port, instead of getting it for, uh, as a string, we need to get it from a in. So that's the reason in that. Um, so this is literally simple. Uh, actually, one other thing that we need to do for core is do get config dot get options. Uh, not get options, but options, and then copy defaults to true. And then save config. So now we are uh, inside of source. We can go ahead and make our plugin .yml. Now inside of this plugin .yml, we need to do a name. So name is MongoDB tutorial. My name, uh, sorry, main is looneyrules.co.uk dot MongoDB tutorial. And then dot core because that's my core class version. So blah blah zero point one author looney rules and I don't need to add a description um, so that's our plugin at YML and now it's time to go just create our config.yml so mongo and then uh, colon and space well enter then for um, spaces and then let's go ahead and do username and this will just equal like something like root and then password will equal just nothing and then if we go ahead and then do like database, so we'll do this in like a row. So let's put test and then host and then like 127.0.0.1, which is basically local host. And then as our port, because the port is the, um, oh, because of the default port, uh, as you can see, this is one of my plugins. So the port is 27017. I had to go get that as a reference because I didn't know the port off by heart. Um, so that is the port. So this is the default stuff that you'll be connecting to, um, or trying to connect to. And then obviously if it doesn't work, then it's not going to work properly. All right. So previously I said that a little method would work. Uh, it turns out that method isn't working, so we're gonna have to go ahead and quickly change something up. Uh, I don't know why it's not working anymore. I had it absolutely fine um, on my other plugin, and I don't really have the time to. Um, searching through it. Uh, so th this way is pretty much the exact same way anyway. Um, nothing. That's the difference. It was just a lot cleaner code. Um, so yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, port credential blah blah blah. Right. Okay. So that's that. So if Mongo client is null, it's going to go ahead and recreate it. Um, and then obviously these two are just deprecated. So we can go ahead and just do at suppress warnings. Uh, it would help if I could spell and then deprecation. Um, so don't need a semicolon, do you? No, I don't think so. Oh, it's a lowercase d. Um, so uh, in the next episode, we are actually going to go ahead and register our MongoDB class in on enable and then disable it in um, d um, on disable. Um, so that is pretty much it, guys. Sorry that it kind of took so long. I now have to go ahead and edit this, render it. And then go ahead and code the website for it for the text tutorial, and then I'll obviously upload this, and then and that's probably why. Right. Uh, so guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave rating as it really does help me out. And if you're liking these tutorials, go ahead and comment down in the description below what you enjoy about them uh, and some things that you actually want to learn, uh, because I know the basics of it, like you know the basics of the tutorials that I need to do. But if you want to learn something new with Mongo, just go ahead and you know tell me what you want to learn, and I'll probably go ahead and code that system as long as it's not too time consuming and yeah that's about it so i hope i see you next time see you guys